Hi everyone, Nick Kretikos of Nick Seasonal Decor, and I'm really excited for tonight. Uh, we have so many beautiful ribbons to design with, and if you're watching this, you're watching me on Bodabra. So in case you didn't know, each and every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we are live here on Bodabra using both of their products, the large Bodabra as well as the mini Bodabra, along with the wires that they carry. And um, yeah, let's get started. We're actually going to be designing a larger wreath tonight. So we ran out of our smaller frames, so we have our 18-inch standard rounds uh, that we're going to use. So as you come in, let me know where you're watching from. As always, Bodabra does give away a free roll of ribbon each and every time we're live. And all you have to do is just comment down below. So also, Alex is behind the camera tonight. So be sure to thank her and say hi for recording. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Just sharing the video to my page real quick. Hey, Joe. Okay, so let's do a little rundown as to what these devices look like. I feel like I'm so quick to use them, but not really, you know, showcase them uh, without ribbon inside of them, right? We usually already have our wires and ribbon, but this is the large. This is something that I recommend for larger designs. Uh, well, actually, not necessarily. This is great for any kind of designing, whether you're making wreaths, swags, um, garlands, tree toppers, large bows for lanterns. This is the perfect tool for you. And what this thing is right here is the wand. So truth be told, you guys already know, I don't get much use out of this because I never really make bows with too many loops. But if you're doing massive bows or using really thick ribbon, what this tool does is it just slides right on the surface. See that little line on top? Just slides in between there and you can compress your ribbon down. That way you don't have to use your hand. So that's the large Bodabra. Here we have our mini, which we like to do one vi or at least one bow each week while we're designing with Bodabra, don't we, Al? Yes. And, and this bow, uh, Bodabra, if I had to choose one, for those of you guys that are wreath makers, I know we have a lot of wreath makers here, I would choose this one as opposed to this one. This one's great for more smaller detailed bows, uh, whether it's using like grow grain ribbon, uh, anything sheer, organza, anything, you know, on a finer texture. But each week we seem to make a bigger and bigger bow using this. So you still can make decent sized bows using it. So here's our two wires. I'm actually going to open up both because last week we only had maybe a foot, foot and a half left of our roll of wire. So we got to choose a new wire. So I want you guys to let me know this time around because whatever wire we use, we're going to be stuck with for a while now. Right, Al? Yep. Because these last a long time. Hi, Dolores. Hi, Debbie. Hey, Marilyn. Welcome, you guys. So I'm also going to share this to our community group. So make sure to join both Bodabra and Nick's Seasonal Decor's community group. Um, our group is the Nick Seasonal Decor Crafting Community, and Bodabra has their awesome group as well. And their group is the Bodabra Fan Gallery. So both groups are great resources for you know other techniques, other designers, um, and just creativity in general. So let's see what the consensus is. We have the silver here, and we have the gold. Which one do you guys want to see more? I don't think I've ever seen you use silver. Well, the last time, <laughs> well, we because uh, one roll lasts so long. That's the thing. Uh, I was thinking silver because gold to me um, is very Christmassy, right? So kind of the winter mount, uh, months, whereas this works for any ribbon and bow. So should That's we use the a, silver? Yeah. Yeah, let's use the silver tonight. So you can find these products available through our affiliate link down below. Bodabra will share that link as well as their uh, group. Julie says, I finally ordered a Bodabra. I can't wait to use it. Awesome. So our friend Brenda ordered one or bought one from Hobby Lobby. Awesome, Brenda. I'm so happy. Hi, Edna. Hey, Edna. So Brenda's been with us for a long time now, uh, and I'm really happy that you went out and picked one up. So the thing is, is the other day I actually did a Hobby Lobby tour. Um, Alex wasn't with me, but I went up and down the aisles because, I mean, I go there every day, right? I go to all those stores very frequently, um, and it was cool to see the Bodabra products on the shelves. Uh, it was really cool to see because I'm live on their Facebook page each Monday. So the silver wire, let's find the end. A lot of people are saying silver. Good choice. Good choice. Now that wasn't too bad, now was it? <laughs> Sometimes you guys, how many of you guys have used curling ribbon? I feel like curling ribbon is the worst. You know what that ribbon is, Al? Like think of balloon ribbons. Yeah. Or to make it relatable to uh, Alex, Yaya, whenever she wraps her cookie trays, yeah. she uses the <laughs> curling ribbon. So what I've done in the past is I can't find my end, and you know I'm lazy, so I'll cut like a random piece, and then it'll get, you know, eventually you'll find it. I'll eventually <laughs> find it, but what ends up happening is it just tangles. So yeah. that's nice that it's right on the surface. We don't have that issue. Hi, Anne. Hi, Connie. Welcome, you guys. Who wants a free roll of ribbon? Hard curling ribbon. So this wire is very thin, and it's kind of 
insignificant, right? It doesn't look like much, but that's exactly what you want. You don't want this to be the showstopper. So it's very sturdy. So it does hold up with all of the ribbon and you know, you have to add some force when you tie it off and it does totally fine. So we're just gonna take that wire. What I've done is I've placed it in the slit up top and I like to tuck mine underneath my bow dabber to get it out of the way. Uh, so now that we have that, we can play with some ribbon. So I was thinking for the first bow, we'll use this. Everybody wanted the pink last week and we ran out of time. So we're gonna use the blue. You can find these down below as well. Patricia wants to win. Arnita wants to win. Hi, Bob. Hey, Bob. Nice to see you all. So if you guys don't mind hitting that like button, I would greatly appreciate it. It lets me know that you enjoy seeing me here on Bodabra. That's a pretty ribbon. Yeah. So last time we did a uh, like a typical bow, right? So let's do a funky bow because this is kind of like a funky looking ribbon. Yeah, Andrea likes that ribbon. Me too. So this ribbon... We cut about five inch loops and then we cut about six to eight inch tails on each side. So the way these, you know, when you're adding them, uh, they should kind of look like awareness ribbons. You see how you kind of get that effect with that one loop and two tails. That's exactly what we want when we work these in. So we'll just place it right in the middle and just continue with that motion. Cold, snowy, Northeast Michigan. Oh my gosh. Hopefully we don't get any more I snow. I know. I'm done with snow. I'm done too. <laughs> it was cold out today. It's still cold out. But hopefully we have some warmer weather in the future. But it's so nice because you see all the bulbs outside blooming. Well, not all of them, but all of our um, hyacinths and daffodils are out. The forsythia bushes are out. And me and Alex, I mean, each year I forget how many yards have those yellow forsythias. Because it seems like there are a dime a dozen around here. Everybody has one in their yard but us, I, <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> so that's three pieces. You could stop there if you wanted a very loose bow, but since this is such a prominent ribbon, I want a prominent bow. So I wanna add between five and seven loops on each side. Patricia says she received a wreath kit packed by Nick. She can't wait to make it. Awesome, Patricia. Yes, definitely share pictures with us. And if you ever create any of the bows that we create here, make sure to tag us. Uh, as well as Bow Dabber, we always love checking out the pieces that you've made. Indiana. Okay. So that's four. Let's come back in with one more. Christy says, I love the spring Easter flowers. Hey, Lori. Hey, Lori. Margaret says, you two are amazing. Great job showing us how to do these. Thank you, Margaret. So now that we have between five and six loops on each, no, not each side. We have like three on each side. We're going to take our wire. We're going to bring that to the middle. Doesn't matter which end you're working in. You're just going to pull it through. Thank you, Edna, for sharing. I appreciate the shares, you guys. It helps us inspire and teach others how to make beautiful bows. So now our bow is secured to an extent. It's not secured enough to add to a design, but I like to pull it really tight, flip it over, and then tie three times on the back. If you tie it once and it falls apart, that's shame on you, right? <laughs> Twice, you know, things happen. If it breaks some of the third time around, you know, that's out of your control. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Pam says, love all your work, Nick. Thank you, Pam. Kathy says the ribbon is beautiful. Yes, very pretty. So now what we're doing is we're dovetailing. So to dovetail, take your tail, fold it in half, and cut from the middle out towards the wired edge at an angle. See how much prettier that looks? So do that to all your tails, and I have to make sure I never forget one because Dad gets mad. So I want to make sure. Maybe I'll forget one just to see him <laughs> upset, right? <laughs> now we'll do the same thing to the other side. How is Yaya doing? Yaya is feeling a little bit better today. Yesterday was a pretty tough day, um, but hopefully everything, hopefully she's back to her normal self really, really soon. Thank you so much for asking, Kelly. All right, one, two tails left. Then we can fluff this out, and you can see how beautiful it's looking. Syria loves that ribbon. Dolores says, thanks, Nick, for packing my supplies I received last week. Of course. Thank you. All right, here's our bow, and it actually looks pretty decent right off the bat, right? But it's not done. we got to fluff this bow out. So to fluff, all I do is I just pull apart the tails. If it looks pretty even around the, so the outside, um, I usually call it a day. But make sure you get any of those creases out of your ribbon. This is wired ribbon, and we only work with wired ribbon at this point. You know, occasionally we'll use it for fresh designs, but I don't even factor that in anymore. 
because even in our fresh designs, we don't work in many bows these days. But since it's wired, it means it can be manipulated very easily and it can be shaped really easily, which is exactly what we want. And look at that. Almost 200 of you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's see if we can hit 200 viewers. What do you think? Pretty, right? And this is perfect for an 18-inch grapevine. If I was to use this on a 14-inch, it'd be a little too large. But you still can use it. Just make sure that the tails are a little bit smaller and the loop size is a little bit smaller as well. So now let's come back in. Let's make our wreath bow next. We might design with it later, but I kind of want to see which ribbon I want to use. Kathy says gorgeous. Helen asks, how is Gemma doing? Much better. So yeah. much better. So she much actually better. is running around again and she started eating a little bit. So Yes. Yeah. So she's always been a picky eater. Well, not so much picky. She just doesn't like food like a normal dog would. Uh, she'll beg for a treat, but that's pretty much the extent of it. When it comes to full meals, she's okay, you know. Um, but yeah, she gave us a little bit of a scare. It's been kind of a hectic month. But thank you guys so much for all of the love you've sent. So this is one of my favorites. It's a burlap ribbon. And it looks like... Uh, we were sent the green and two different shades of blue. Look at the blues as well. Thank you for sharing your skills. Thank you, Denise, for watching. So, Andrea, where can I see the wreath community? Make sure that you join the Facebook group, and we can have more information sent your way after that. But we're going to do a traditional bow for this wreath. Maybe we'll do four tails, though. Maybe we'll take this set of tails, place it here. And then should we try a longer set? Let's do a longer set too. Yeah, why not? So these will be really long. And I just love the look of longer tails. One of the best tips I can give you for those of you that are wreath makers and in business to sell your designs is the longer the tail, the more expensive it looks. You know, you're only using a yard or so more ribbon, but it does pay off. So we're, we, up, we placed our wire in. I got nervous for a second. <laughs> now what we're doing is replacing that ribbon. See how we have a little bit of an overhang you don't want to place it right to the edge or else you pose the risk of it slipping right out. Then we'll do loops about four and a half, five inches. Cindy loves the blue ribbon. Yes, who wants to win a free roll of ribbon? Brenda loves that color green and the others. Yeah, so this is, I wouldn't classify this as a lime green. I mean, it can be, uh, but to me, this looks more like a moss green, right? Or fresh green. Hi, Kathy. Bella is doing great, and Dad's kidney stones are all cleared up. <laughs> yes, so they he's are. Good to go. <laughs> he is happy. So that's three loops on this side. We'll do three on the other, and maybe we'll maybe we'll do one or two extra. Hi, Pat from New Jersey. He wants to win. Welcome, Pat. Yeah, let us know. All you have to do is comment that you'd like to win. Okay. So by a show of hands or comments, should we design with the wreath now, or should we wait? I kind of I'm kind of impatient. I kind of want to see how this turns out. So let us know if you want to see the wreath right now or if you want to see it later on. Donna says, I love the green this year. Thanks for sharing and would love to win ribbon. Thank you, Donna. We have Joan watching from Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. What time of day is it for you, Joan? Hi, Danae. Welcome, Danae. So it looks like we have three, five, three, five on each side. Let's stop there. Actually, let's just do one more. I want to make a really full bow tonight. Then we can snip it off. So just to show you guys, it's not necessary in a bow like this, but in case you need to compress it, you can just take your wand, stick it right in the middle, and squish your bow down. The more loops you have, the more necessary that's going to be. But we're going to take our wires to the middle, Kathy says, yes, now. <laughs> Crystal says, design now. Yes. <laughs> Tammy says, wreath now. All right. Take our wires, pull them to the back. Tighten your bow. Tie it off from behind. I should have cut these wires a little bit longer. But you know what you can do, uh, do too? Let's just cut an extra piece. We're going to take our bow. Place the wire from behind. See if we have enough to tie it off. We should. Oh, Joan says it's 10 past mi midnight there. Oh, my gosh. Late. Very late. You're a night owl. <laughs> Watching from North Carolina. So we'll tie it off. I have just enough wire to do this. 
Let's see if my stubby fingers can can get the trick. Let's see. There we go. I think I did four knots, so we should be good. So the bow looks like it won, right? So let's do our wreath. So we're going to pull our loops apart. We have four tails in this design, so we want to make sure to pull those down. And to fluff the bow, let me show you guys how we do that. So these ribbons are very thick, and it depends on what project you're working on. As a general rule, the thicker the ribbon, the more it'll hold its you know, shape. But the more loops you have with a thicker ribbon, it can get a little bit challenging. So we stopped at the perfect stopping point, which was five on one side, six on the other. So we have 12 loop, uh, 13 loops on this bow, which with my superstition, I would have either, I, <laughs> if I knew, I would have done 12 or 14, but that's okay. Anne from West Springfield, Massachusetts is watching. Hi, Anne. Hi, Anne. Kelly from Michigan would like to win. Welcome, Kelly. And if you guys don't mind doing a favor and letting us know, um, you know how you heard about our lives. Always appreciate that. So we have four long, beautiful tails down below. So everybody said to do the wreath now, so we've got to listen to them, right? Yeah, everyone wants to see it. So let's do, let's work in a little bit of our Ruskis. You can find these products available on our website. We're going to just break these apart. Look at a, what a beautiful foliage, right? Yeah. So let's snip these off. Andrea says, I noticed you have a red shirt on tonight instead of black. Yes, I think, well, we said this last week, I was wearing my fish shirt for like two weeks, three weeks in a <laughs> row. So I had to mix it up. Marilyn, All right. Marilyn, is your Easter on Sunday? Yes. Yes, so being Greek Orthodox, we celebrate Easter sometimes the same day as, you know, most. Sometimes it's two weeks later, sometimes a week before. It really just depends on the year, doesn't it, Al? Yes. But this week, this year, it's one week after. Okay, so you heard from Facebook and YouTube, awesome. We're gonna take some of this greenery now. And when I fluff my bows live on Bodabra, I like to do it very simply and quickly. That way we're able to do as many tutorials as possible in the night. But after we do this, we always take a few extra minutes and really fluff the bows like crazy uh, and then send them over to Bodabra. So, you know, you guys can check out Bodabra's social media and you'll see pictures of these bows after they're all done. So if you're wondering what they look like once they're hung up on a wall and kind of fluffed out, it gives you a better visual as to how yours might turn out. I think just greenery would look great, but we have some pretty flowers we got to work in. Place a piece on that side. I see we have over 215 of you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Ruth is watching from Lake Mary, Florida, and would love to win. Ooh, Florida. I also have Jane from Florida tonight. Hi, Jane. Let us know how your weather is. I'm sure it's better than ours. <laughs> but then again, our friends in Florida, they complain when the weather's like 65, so. I know, and we love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hot for us. Barbara says, love the greenery. Thank you, Barbara. Let's see, this piece isn't sitting exactly where I want. There we go. And even fluffing your greenery and your flowers makes a world of a difference. So never be afraid to do that. All right, now I figured we'd work in a little bit of blue. So these are hyacinths. And we have these blooming out in our garden right now. And they look so beautiful. And above looking beautiful, they smell beautiful, don't they, Al? They do. We were just sitting outside the other day smelling yeah. them. So let's work in these. We're just going to take them, dip them in our skillet. Robin asked what that type of greenery is. That's a ruscus. Yep, that's one of our ruscus bushes. And I love it for the, the smaller texture. See how small and finely detailed those leaves are? Keep scale into consideration when making your bows and when designing your wreaths. So if you're working with a smaller wreath form or even the size we're using today, sometimes your best bet is to use finer detailed flowers and greenery. Hi, Pam. Okay, we'll place another piece on this side. We have some dogwood. I'm thinking we'll work in some of that dogwood as well. Another piece up top. You see how we have those kind of in a... What's the word I'm looking for? They're kind of spaced evenly all the way around. That's also important. 
Yeah, I do want to work in our dogwoods. So here we have our dogwoods. I think that white contrast with the colors we already got will look really nice. Hi, Arlene. Dolores asked what size wreath you're using. We're using one of our 18 inch grapevines. So we are out of stock with these. Hopefully in the next few days, they'll arrive. And this is the perfect size for the standard door. All right, over 225. Let's see if we can hit 250 tonight. Oh, I was just wondering. I was like, why do I still have the tag on that? But it's my finger. <laughs> Tammy says, love to watch your creations. Thank you, Tammy. Bernice says, looking beautiful. So we're not even working in a typical green or, uh, or typical green flower with this because the green is that contrast in color with all the flowers we're working in. Another piece up top. Let's do one more. So all I'm doing with these is I'm just breaking them down into smaller pieces to stretch, stretch our dollar, save yourselves a little bit of money because you don't have to stick the entire stem in all at once. By breaking it up, you're able to distribute it a little bit better. That way it doesn't look clunky, you know? Sometimes if you keep them in their entirety, they just look too, too bulky for a design. We have another piece. We'll stick that there. I think we need one more there. So let's break down our final one. Ooh, I grabbed the perfect amount from the warehouse today. Hi, Marianne. She says, I would not have, I would not have think, uh, sorry. I would have not have thought to put a green bow with a blue flower. It looks nice. Right? It does look pretty. It looks, some, it's just different. And don't be afraid of trying things that are different. You don't have to be in your comfort zone 24 seven, you know, with your bows, give different colors a shot different possibilities. I mean, the possibilities truly are endless. I know I say that each week, um, but it really is. You can do so many different prints and so many different styles. I usually stick to the conservative side of things uh, with our designs and not like to work in too much color, but I think this has the perfect amount of color. What do you guys think? Cindy says beautiful. Thank you, Cindy. Danae loves the dogwood flowers, one of her favorites. I know. And when I see dogwood flowers, or when I use dogwood flowers, I think of that Darius Rucker song, Wagon Wheel. Remember that song? Yeah. And funny thing is, is me and Alex, or Alex, I should say, won free tickets to see him. <laughs> so look, it could be you guys tonight, instead of winning free Darius Rucker tickets, you could win a free roll of ribbon. So hey, Alex didn't think she was going to win. Actually, let me rephrase. Not only did Alex not think she was going to win, but when she did win, she thought it was a scam. <laughs> so she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I really did. I've never won anything before. All right, so there's the wreath. We'll fluff it out a little bit, hang it up, but I want to continue making bows. So show some hearts you think that wreath turned out pretty. Almost 2.30 of you guys. I like the dogwood. Linda loves the design. They look pretty. So we worked in four tails. Some are longer, some are shorter. Just adds the beauty. So 18 inch grapevine. One bush of the hyacinths, I think we used four or five of those dogwood sprays, and two bushes of the ruscus, along with our ribbon. That's a pretty bow, though. So that is that. Let's continue. We are going to switch to our mini now, because I feel like it. Right, Al? We're definitely in the moment type of people here. Cut a length of wire. Jean says, beautiful. Peggy says, the dogwoods are beautiful. Thank you, Peggy. Marianne says she does that song in her band. Oh, do you? Okay, so I think we're going to switch to this one. Let's try a two and a half inch. I don't think we've done that before within our mini Bodabra. So we're going to take this ribbon. How pretty is that? Isn't that pretty? So pretty. I think we used the purple last time. We did use the purple last time. So I'm going to show you guys something, right? So if we look at this ribbon, see how all the butterflies are going in the same direction. Sometimes manufacturers place them every which way so that when you design, it's not going to make a difference. But I don't like that way that looks as if we keep it one full piece. Some butterflies are going uphill, others are going downhill. So to get away from that, what you can do is do what I'm doing here, which is to cut two separate tails so that when you work them into your bodabra, watch this, ready? We're going to pinch, place it in, butterflies are going upright. And if we were to keep it on one piece, this is how it would look, right? But by cutting two pieces, now they're facing in the same direction. So I cut one tail a little bit longer. We'll just, well, we'll trim that a little bit. 
We might curl those up. Carly has a bodabra and she's trying to make bows with it. Yes, yeah, share some pictures with us, you guys. Denise loves the ribbon. Very pretty ribbon. I mean, butterflies to me are perfect for spring and summer, right? And if it's fall, you could do like orange monarchs. I think that would be pretty for fall. So we'll do two loops. And then to finish off our little bow tie, we'll snip it off and do our final loop. So I know Alex knows the name, so she's not going to shout it out. So what kind of loop is this, you guys? Let's see if you've been watching me here on Bodabra for a while now. Linda says, what a neat idea. But that, you know, this ribbon is in so many different prints, right? So think of like elf ribbon or ribbon that has sayings on it, like Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or Happy Fourth of July. Any of those ribbons you do want to be careful of um, when you're adding your tails in because you don't want the print to go upside down. At least I don't. And we do have our winner tonight. So congratulations to Mary Ostrom McCracken from Rockford, Illinois. Congratulations, Mary. And we will be in Illinois in a matter of a couple months. Next month. No, two months. two months. I know, so soon. Congratulations. Yes, let's all congratulate Mary. And don't forget, each Monday, free roll of ribbon. So now we'll dovetail these. All right, we got three minutes. We can easily crank out another bow. So here's a simple little bow tie. You can add these to hats. You could add these to... Um, Wine bottles, attach them going up your stairs, the banister, not banister, what are those little pipe, like poles called? Uh, well, spindles, I, that's the word, spindles. I don't think I ever knew that. Right, you could do this going up your spindles. All right, and let's do a lemon ribbon for the heck of it. So here's our lemon ribbon. And you can find all of these down below. That's easier. <laughs> Remove the plastic, of course. Yes, congratulations, Mary. Look at you guys being a supportive bunch. And I'm, I'm betting if one of you guys is watching now, you could be our lucky winner next week. So take your wire, place it under your bodabra. We're gonna take our lemon ribbon. Here we have it in the green. Look at the beige, too. So pretty. If I, like I had to green. choose one, you'd like the green, I would do the the beige. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but the green is very pretty. It looks very fresh. Yeah, yeah, it looks fresh to me. So see, this is a ribbon where it doesn't matter which way it is because they're all going every which way. So for this bow, we're going to cut a length of tails. I tend to cut mine a little bit longer, but I really love that look of them going down below. Place your tails in. Then what you can do is you can place your ribbon in. Again, leave a little bit of an overhang. Create a loop. We'll do three loops on each side. There's one. And I rotate my bodabra instead of my hands. There's two. Coming back in with more. Oh, thank you, Yvonne. She says she really liked my class on colors. Oh, thank, thank you, you so Yvonne. much. Yeah, so Alex knows all about her colors. We'll do three. So that's three on this side. Three on this side. What I think would be fun, and you guys can let me know, um, of doing like a contest to see how fast we can make these bows, right? <laughs> Using that'd the bow dab, I think that'd be fun. So we did three, about four inches, four and a half inches or so. Now we're going to come back in with two on each side that are only about two and a half inches, three inches max, so that we have that kind of gradual from smallest to biggest or biggest to smallest. Cindy asked, do you twist the center when making the bow or just push it down? Yes, so I do twist it. See, if I didn't twist, well, I already twisted it, but if I didn't twist the ribbon, the printed side would be up, but when you gather it, the non-printed side would be facing up. So whenever I create a loop, we, we're gonna take it, pinch it, and reverse it. So you want the back side facing up because then when you create your loop, the front side's facing up. So that's two on each side. Now we're gonna do the final loop. I don't, I don't remember seeing any of these comments. So what's this loop called, you guys? Maybe somebody guessed it earlier. I didn't Oh, look. I think someone did say it. Let's see if you guys know what that loop is, that final little loop. Pull your tails to the, or your wires to the middle and tighten it. 
Take those wires, pull them from the front to the back. Thank you, Cheryl. Yes, Pat says button. Yes. I knew I saw someone say button before, and I forgot why you guys were saying button, so that's my fault. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even check. I'm sure a bunch of you guys said button. Yep. So now we can fluff it out. Pull those two loops, the smaller loops on either side. Pull your three bigger loops out. And the more you fluff, the more beautiful your bow is gonna be. So I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you use cheap ribbon, if you use very expensive ribbon, it all looks the same to me if you don't sit there and take the time to fluff it nicely. Fluffing makes a world of a difference and it really can take your you know, average ribbon or your average bow to the next level. So spend those extra few minutes. Trust me, they will pay off in the end because you'll have that perfect bow. And look at that. I'd say that looks so pretty, pretty perfect to me. What do you guys think? Almost 2.30 of you guys still? Well, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're just tuning in, uh, hold off a minute because the replay will be posted and you can watch everything we've created. So here is that final bow. I kind of do like that green. I might like the green it's more so than the pretty. beige. So It looks fresh. Like it looks like tasty. Yeah, it looks clean. Maybe that's the right word. <laughs> Maybe. So that's the final bow. I want to thank you all so very much for tuning in. Thank you for the likes, the shares. You can join the Bodabra Fan Gallery and the Nick Seasonal Decor Crafting Community. Find your products down below. I want to thank Joe for helping us out tonight. I want to thank Dory, and I want to thank Sandy for having us as a guest. So thank you guys again. Congratulations to Mary, our lucky winner for Ribbon tonight. And you can win yourself a free roll next Monday. So we are live on Bodabra each and every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Bye, everyone. Good night, everyone.